So we hear a lot of mixed messages about nutrition. How should we all be eating? Should we be vegan, paleo, gluten-free? So we can't even decide on what we should be doing about the egg. I'm sure you guys have heard, you know, maybe it's all good for you, or maybe we've got to watch out for that yolk, that saturated fat, cholesterol. Well, what about the people who are allergic to the egg whites in there? So ultimately, the answer is it depends. So as we start unveiling the genome and all the science behind there and uh, entering into medical uh, advancements, cancer treatments, we need to be using that same technology and those same innovations towards nutrition. So uh, doing this will allow us to make three key innovations. We're going to be able to prevent disease, improve performance, and just feel better in general. So my journey into nutrition started first as an athlete and then eventually as a strength coach, where I worked with the Utah Grizzlies hockey team, trained athletes for the 2012 London Olympics. So in working with these teams' nutritionists, we found a pretty common issue, which was athletes responded very differently to their diets. Now, they were mostly eating the same things, which was what the science was recommending at the time. But some athletes had great responses, and some had inflammation and just did not respond as well in general. So I started investigating the literature and thinking about why would that be. So as I took a deep dive, I found out there's a lot of information out there and also a lot of misinformation. So, you know, we can all, we've all heard of all these different diets. So you can have heard about the ketogenic diet, a low carb, grapefruit diet, the cookie diet. You can really find anything you want to see. But if there's one that worked for everybody, I think we'd all be using it by now which means that we need to do a little bit of a deeper dive into why this is uh, why the case, why we need to look at each person in the size of one. So we still need to also come back to whether or not that egg is something we should be going for. So as we start looking at genetics and at our own gen uh, individual sequencing through companies such as Illumina and 23andMe, we're going to be able to find out uh, what in our genome allows us to have our own specific diets, what's going to give us the best uh, response. The issue here is that if we look at our genes and each individual base pair, which is how we sequence the uh, genome, how it all fits together, so that's three billion base pairs, which is enough to fill 200 phone books, if you guys remember what those are. <laughs> so how do we use all that information and get something tangible out of there? How do we find out how this is actually going to help us and figure, yeah, work towards our individual diet. So when we start looking at sequencing companies and they start analyzing our uh, individual genomes, we've been finding genes which we can lock into actionable information and what is going to allow us to really make improvements in our everyday life and come up with personalized nutrition in much the same way as we use personalized medicine to treat cancer now. So moving on to preventing disease. So we're gonna start out by looking at APOE4. So this is a gene that has to do with how you metabolize fat. So going back to that egg, you know, if you have an APO, a positive gene for APOE4, you don't do as well with dietary cholesterol, and you don't do as well with certain saturated fats. So in knowing that, you can lower the inflammation. As you guys can see on the left, you have markers of infl uh, inflammation, which lead to Alzheimer's disease and heart disease. So if you guys know what you're looking for, you can really take an actionable item to prevent these diseases long term. So another example that we're going to talk about is folate. So this is the MTHFR gene. You can guess what scientists have nicknamed that. So <laughs> this gene is responsible for how you metabolize folate, which helps uh, work as a building block of basic cells and uh, how you metabolize amino acids. So if you have a healthy marker, you can use that folate as a solid foundation. You have no issues there. And this is especially important with people, for example, expectant mothers. So if you guys know prenatal vitamins, they have folic acid in there, and uh, it's really important for the baby's development. It staves off certain diseases. But if you have the uh, inactive version of the MTHFR gene, you don't absorb these folic acids from the supplements, so you really need to start looking at your foods. For example, spinach, other leafy greens, to get that folate in there to help with your baby's health. So otherwise, if you don't take the proper action, you don't have a great foundation and can lead to certain uh, diseases and disabilities. So moving on to performance. 
Now, we all know that people training for a marathon love to carb load. We know people who are trying to add muscle. They like to pack on the protein. But in terms of actually taking a tangible step to have a better feeling, better performance, we need to start looking at the genetics. So some people don't respond well to certain nutrients, for example, certain types of fat. And we can look at your genetics to help you realize what is going to be the best diet for you. So in improving the performance, we can give you the macronutrients that you need for your diet. So, okay, and how are we going to feel better? So when we start looking at the, uh, at the allergic responses that certain people have to foods, you look at things like peanuts. And that's a, that can be a pretty significant allergy, so it can be life-threatening. But not everything that we eat gives us that kind of response. So some people can be bloated after eating other foods, like dairy, or you hear about people who want to eat gluten-free. So this is because you have a low-grade inflammatory response. And just in the same way that having a hard day at work gives you certain stressors, now when you have dietary inflammation, it triggers that same stress in your body. So by uh, removing some of these stressors in your diet, you're going to be able to take an actionable item, or actionable, actionable uh, response to uh, moving forward with these foods. So whereas we used to think that the future of food and nutrition was finding this best diet for everybody, now we know that if we want to prevent disease, improve performance, and just feel better in general, we need to stop thinking about the best diet for everybody and start finding the best diet for you. Thank you.